Before the city of Darwin was established, Ludmilla Creek provided a source of food, a place to rest and play for the Larrakia people. The surrounding bushland consisted of paperbark swamp, jungle and open woodland, much like a small part of the area looks today, after over 140 years of white settlement. The suburb Ludmilla was named after the Ludmilla Creek, which in turn was named after Ludmilla Holtz, the daughter of Morris Holtz in 1890. Morris was the curator of the Darwin Botanic Gardens. Ludmilla is bounded by Douglas Street, the coastline running through to Totem Road, Bagot Road and the Stewart Highway with a line running through to Douglas Street. Ludmilla includes the special purpose leases for Bagot Community and part of the Kalalak Gwalwa Daraniki special purpose lease. I can remember Lord Miller as a fishing ground where we used to go fishing down there. The mangroves. But yeah, we have to just walk through the mangroves that was free then because there was no back road. Yeah. Nothing. So it was okay because we used to just walk down. When we came, pulled the house, back at house was just a two way bitumen. Usually hold together by foot holes. Absolutely. Speed limit 15 miles an hour. Yeah. It was terrible. I mean, it was just a bush camp, too. It was just a bush. Yeah. There's only one street that went from, I think, from the beach, not the beach, to the wharf. This part here where I'm sitting was just all jungle. There was no. There was no house, there was nothing actually. I bought the block second hand. It was sold on the auction for £54. Wow. Yeah. Called block. It was just a graded block, not a blade of grass or anything. And um, they just cleared the fourth side and there was common houses on each side. They're still here. And what are your first memories of this street? No gardens, uh, no curtains, <laughs> um, a lot of insects <laughs> and frogs. We were lucky we had fly wire on our house, but um, many of the other houses had no fly wire and uh, so there was a lot of wildlife that came in. Yeah, and the rest of Blood Miller was it very developed? Was there many houses or well? No, it was dead end. This this was about these were the last blocks developed in this Well Street area, and um, mostly all young people, and there was a huge lot of young families, and and by the time I had my second child or my third child. Um, the scaffold was being used as a baby clinic because there was a hundred babies just in Well Street in the area alone. We had a house, uh, we had a home right back there near um, McDonald's. Oh, I did so. Yeah, just near there. Um, and we just had a one-way street. There was no two-way street, just one street to go down and up. And we weren't allowed to go out on the street to go hunting on the other side. Because if we were caught, we'd be all put to jail. And at those times, we didn't know who to speak to. Because we were afraid to uh, go out when they told us that we weren't allowed to go out from Bagot itself. I mean, the old Bagot. I've always been involved in the Country Women's Association. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. 
that was a legacy from being a farmer's daughter yes. back in Western Australia where I came from. They did have a, um, a, a class in Bagot for the women and um, Vi Stanton was very active in that, in, in helping CWA to um, help the women there mm. and they were taught various uh, um, crafts and cooking and uh, activities and it was very successful for yeah. a few years and then Bagot uh, management changed and things uh, were not available anymore. Yeah. My name's Lorraine Donfeld and I live in Bulbul, Court Ludmilla. And how long have you lived in this street? Uh, We've moved into Ludmilla in October 1973. We had friends that lived here and um, when we were looking for a house, you either had to be a government employee or get a housing commission house, you had to have two children under five. We weren't entitled to either and our friends heard that a uh, fellow that owned this house was getting a transfer to Canberra. Yeah. And uh, they put us onto that and we bought it from him. Actually thinking back, there wasn't as much growth around the houses okay. and most of the houses were uh, didn't have any um, extensions or anything on them. All right, so they're quite plain. Yes, yep. very plain. Physically, Ludden Miller, I'm trying to remember if Bagot Road, I think was only two lane highway then and now it's six lanes. Yeah. Um, there wasn't the Dick Ward Drive connector road. The school had a lot more children back then. When we moved into the street, um, it was mainly families with young children. The Ludmilla Primary School was established in 1967. Ludmilla School has always been a great community resource as well as a place for education. It was used as a haven following Cyclone Tracy, with many families sharing classrooms and basic facilities. Bagot School didn't survive Cyclone Tracy. After it was destroyed in 1974, the children were transferred into the Ludmilla Primary School. I did quite a lot down at Ludmilla School, which was opened when Anne started school. And so I got involved with the Mothers Club, later on with the council yeah and um, i think the biggest thing that happened in my time was getting the overpass over bagot road 